powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jay Cohn. Janelle has the night off. Thunderstorms rule the night across Montana, packing hail, strong winds, and yes, even more rain to a wide swath of the state. And while the storms for the most part skirted the Billings area, in nearby Roundup, residents there cleaning up after the golf ball sized hail pummeled parts of Muscle Shell County. Yet another night of active weather to wrap up the month of May. We want to show you some of the pictures sent to us tonight from Roundup residents. Look at the hail piled up on the highway. Looks like snow in the wintertime. The hailstones, some the size of lemons. And this viewer shows us the, the damage left behind to this fifth wheel. It lost about six windows. This damaging hail did a number across uh, Muscle Shell County in many parts. And some examples of the golf ball size hail, as we showed you before, even some the size of lemons. Now, Q2 storm chaser John Ojeda told me just a few minutes ago that he, along with about 15 other vehicles at this hour, are stranded on Highway 12 East. That's about six to eight miles east of Roundup. He says water is flowing over the road there from the rainstorm and the water flowing back into the Muscle Shell River. He says at this point he's not sure how long those motorists will be stranded. He did tell me, though, that tonight's storm was one of the most intimidating storms that he has ever experienced. Earlier today, near Crow Agency, floodwaters from the nearby Little Bighorn River forced the closure of Interstate 90. This was the scene this morning near I-90's intersection with Montana Highway 212. Traffic had to be diverted onto the frontage road for a short time. Tonight, though, that water has receded. Early this afternoon, the driving lanes for both the west and eastbound uh, parts of the interstate were reopened. But the area was put under a special reduced 35 mile an hour speed limit. But tonight, according to the Department of Transportation, that speed restriction has been lifted. So now for the latest on our wild weather, our chief forecaster Bob McGuire catching his breath tonight. It's been a busy night. Bob, where are those storms at right now? We've got one not too far away from us in Bighorn County, Montana. And the new warning just came out. Let me show you where it is. You can see it there. Half dollar size hail and 60 mile per hour winds just north of Wyola, uh, you know, right, right around the Interstate 90. Now that severe thunderstorm warning stays with us till 1045 p.m. this evening. The Doppler radar shows you those big storms continue to move right into the center heart of uh, Bighorn. County. They're just south of Hardin right now. I think Hardin is probably going to get some of this as well. So as we move back, you can see several more showers and thunderstorms to come our way. Uh, most of the biggest stuff, though, has come and gone. Just a couple of big ones down towards our south, towards uh, Hardin. But uh, for tomorrow, just isolated showers is all we're expecting to see. Then after that, we'll probably see most of the big stuff make its way in towards the Dakotas. We'll have more in your forecast in a few more minutes. Jay? All right. Thank you very much, Bob. Meanwhile, in our neighboring state of Wyoming, Mother Nature isn't paying them any favors either. Take a look at this video taken by Dennis Davis. This shows the destructive mudslide near Hunter Peak across, uh, coming across XUX Road. This is in the Crandall area, just off the Chief Joseph Scenic Highway. This happened earlier this week. Look at the power of this mud moving boulders and trees. Two cabins didn't stand a chance against this heavy, devastating mud. Trees and boulders cascading down the pass. A couple of those cabins were knocked off of their foundations. According to the Powell Tribune, the owner of one cabin said he hoped he'd be able to divert the slide away from his property. But engineers in Park County, Wyoming say really there was nothing that could have been done. And the slide, we're told, is still ongoing. Engineers don't believe anyone else is in danger, but they say they can't begin to work until the slide stops and things dry out. As yet, there is not an estimate as to when that work might begin. The hottest and fastest moving lava from Hawaii's Kilauea volcano now forcing new evacuations on the Big Island. Residents now in two coastal neighborhoods have been ordered to leave. The volcano emergency now into its fifth week. CBS's Danielle Nottingham has the latest for us. This is the most active fissure, at times spewing lava from Hawaii's Kilauea volcano as high as 250 feet into the air. While the site is spectacular, the threat is serious. The U.S. Geological Survey says 1,500 degree lava is moving fast enough to cover about six football fields in an hour. The scientific aspect of this is fascinating, but it's tempered hugely by the fact that this is a neighborhood and people have lost homes. At least 77 have been destroyed so far, and more are at risk. Stephen Neal and his family were hoping to stick it out in their home in Kapoho Beach lots, but it was too dangerous. Lights flashing, sirens on, 
and uh, saying everybody uh, evacuate. The uh, lava is going to be at four corners, four to six hours, it's coming down the, the uh, Highway 132 really fast. Workers are trying to clear a new evacuation route. Lava has already overrun Highway 132. That leaves people in about 500 homes and vacation rentals with just one exit. If the lava flows cross Highway 137, there would be no way out. We want those people to leave. We don't want to have first responders and National Guardsmen or Marines in helicopters putting their lives at risk to rescue them. Residents are facing uncertainty whether they stay or go. Depending on how many days or weeks or months it takes, God only knows what we'll find we, you know, if and when we get back to the house. It's not clear how many people still remain in evacuation zones. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, Los Angeles. Closer to home here in Billings, the Montana Energy Summit 2018 wrapped up this evening. That special event brought together industry leaders from across the country to discuss the future of America's energy industry. Continental Resources CEO Harold Hamm among the key speakers this morning. Ham helped spearhead the Bakken oil boom in eastern Montana and western North Dakota. And he told the crowd not only is America on the verge of energy self-sufficiency, he believes the U.S. will soon dominate the world energy market. Everybody thought uh, we'd go back to when this country was scarcity and was running out of natural gas. Uh, that was actually going to have to import uh, LNG. Uh, you know, to sustain everything. And now what are we doing? We're exporting natural gas. We found over a hundred years supply and some of us geologists think we, we see 200 years supply of natural gas in this country. Also today, TransCanada CEO Russ Gerling, he heads the company behind the Keystone XL pipeline. He said that oil will begin to flow into the Keystone as early as next year. He told the crowd today that 20-year contracts are now in place with reliable producers that will keep oil flowing through the pipeline into the foreseeable future. Gerling also said that project now has the approval to cross three U.S. states and two Canadian provinces as it transports tar sands oil from Hardesty, Alberta to the Texas Gulf Coast. And as for the pipeline's impact on Montana, Gerling says the project means as much as an $80 million windfall to the state, $62 million of that in property taxes. Senator Dane says one of his takeaways from the summit is the huge opportunities overseas with Japan and Korea and the demand for U.S. energy. The more energy that we can supply to those critical trading partners, more of that that comes from Montana instead of the Middle East, that's good for our economy, for our tax base, for our jobs, and frankly, for national security and the geopolitical security issues that we face right now with the challenges of North Korea and Iran. America is moving towards independence, removing that dependency on the Middle East. And now we have a chance to be globally energy dominant. That's a great position to be in as a nation, and it's a great position to be in for Montana. And this year's Energy Summit follows a similar conference that Senator Daines hosted here in Billings two years ago. In Montana's four-way race for the Republican U.S. Senate primary, the candidates and some outside forces are taking nothing for granted as Election Day quickly approaches. Tonight, MTN Chief Political Reporter Mike Dennison shows us what the campaigns are doing as they enter the home stretch. The winner of this four-man primary takes on Democratic U.S. Senator John Tester this fall. But if the campaign's broadcast ad battles are any indication, it looks like a two-man race between State Auditor Matt Rosendale and former State District Judge Russell Fagg of Billings. A free market group backing Rosendale, the Club for Growth, is doing the dirty work against Fagg with ads like this one. Fag defended a judge who suggested a 14-year-old rape victim was to blame for her own attack. Fag wrote a 2014 column that said the judge in question was a wonderful person, but he also said the judge did make a mistake on the rape case that drew national attention and a rebuke from the Montana Supreme Court. Fag is leveling his own tough criticism of Rosendale, blasting the former state senator's position on the death penalty. Matt Rosendale? Rosendale opposes the death penalty. But Fag is also using research by Democrats to go after Rosendale, with a mailer questioning Rosendale's residency and suggestions that he isn't really a rancher. Fag told MTN News that he's highlighting these issues because Democrats will use them if Rosendale wins, but not if the nominee is himself. Rosendale's campaign dismisses the criticisms as untrue and says he's the best person to take on and defeat Tester. The Club for Growth, which has spent more than $1 million on this race, also bought digital ads this week, going after another of Rosendale's competitors, Big Sky businessman Troy Downing. 
Back home in California, Troy Downing managed an investment company whose owners defrauded investors. Downing's campaign says the charge is baseless and calls Club for Growth a dark money group out of the D.C. swamp and says Downing is in good position going into the final week. The former tech entrepreneur has spent $1.1 million of his own money on the campaign. And finally, there's the dark horse in this contest, State Senator Al Osheski, a Kalispell surgeon. Olszewski had his best fundraising period of the campaign in the past six weeks and has been blanketing radio airways with ads for much of the campaign. He told MTN News this week he's avoided attacking his opponents and stuck to the issues, which he says makes him a stronger challenger to tester. So what's going to win this race? Name recognition? Big money? Or maybe something more meaningful in the minds of voters who are rendering their verdict now with absentee ballots and in person next Tuesday? Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Thank you very much, Mike. Election Day, of course, next Tuesday, June 5th. Complete election night coverage for you right here on Q2. Well, still ahead on tonight's 10 o'clock news, two completely different people with completely different lives came together in what would be a life-changing experience for both. We'll show you coming up. And later in sports tonight, Scott has some fun with the six-man football all-stars. Wait till you hear what movies they've watched. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Green. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.